Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilu here on the Juicy Living Tour on the beautiful island of Sri Lanka. Um, I guess life, the universe decided for me to come here. Yes. Um, you were one of my first, very first contact coming to this area of the world. And it was like, life kept on pushing me in this direction rather than India. Why, I don't know yet, but it surely is a country that where I feel good and I feel the love. Awesome. This is the conversation here. It's all yes. about the love, isn't it? Absolutely, Lilu. Thank you. It's a blessing to have you here. You're just awesome. You carry such a vibe on you. So, you know, I live off vibes. So, yeah. so I'm alive now. So, thank you. <laughs> so, so, you're like a uh, vampire of vibes? Or how do well, you go? Well, not a vampire, but you know, uh, vi vibrations, we all vibrate vibrations and once we really understand the concept that we are all a good vibe then I think you know the world will live a little longer than it's supposed to and the flowers will bloom a little longer mm -hmm. and the dogs will play a little longer and ma humanity can go on for longer mm -hmm. if you understand that it's all about the vibe it's not about what even we are saying when we walk into a room it's about what we are vibrating at and uh, uh, even if we are saying good morning you know uh, we could be the good morning uh, if you just walk into a place so it's about the vibration actually Actually, yeah. and that's what this lifestyle is about uh -huh. so you're a happy breathinarian you're an entrepreneur I mean you're in many different yeah. things but really there's y you switch your life to something greater bigger that you really I mean you're here to say you know hey guys this is something to really look at because I think this is the way we can really fully live and honor who we truly are okay. so it's more than just breathinarian give us a explain to us uh, w how you view it and why this is to you so important in these times like yes. 2014 yes well I really believe that uh, uh, well breatharianism is just uh, a byproduct of or not eating is a byproduct of happiness or uh, a, co uh, a happy consciousness I think if you're happy and if you're very joyous we'll be reaching out to attain to things that we can touch feel taste and see much less than before so the world is always trying to throw something that can satisfy and tantalize your five senses so what you can f see in the movies what you can touch with your hands you know what you can smell so it's always trying to tantalize the five senses but uh, the spiritual mature man should be able to understand that it's we don't live off our five sense experience. That is not only life. We are spiritual. We are internal. Our inward man is so much greater. And he doesn't live on the five senses. He lives on discernment and intuition and joy and love and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, yes, I, I think uh, as we ascend and as the world ascends and the whole world is ascending to a more spiritual place, I think the five sense experience will just be what it is. It will be an experience. But life will be lived in the spirit uh, realm and that's what's important we need to make the difference between energy and pleasure yes I think uh, I think a lot of the time uh, we eat food uh, thinking that we uh, need to eat it so that it will give us life force or energy uh, when uh, uh, you know Jesus said that man shall not live on bread alone but on the word or the vibration of God so I think uh, what he was trying to say was hey not alone no, food not alone you know it's okay to eat but we should eat for pleasure uh, you know chocolate should be uh, for pleasure it shouldn't be for calories that I could uh, be strength strengthened on and I really believe that food does give you energy and it does have uh, calorie contents that can energize you but there are higher forces and higher vibrations and frequencies that can gi really give you energy and life and one of those being agape unconditional love you know when you're in love and when you love people there's energy and there's life people who are dying you know people who get healed when you get healed the first thing that a person who is sick uh, who wants to get healed should understand that he's loved as he knows he's loved, as he knows he's forgiven, the healing process act gets activated. So love is the creative force of the world. Love will strengthen you, love will heal you. And it's a higher force and higher frequency than meats or chocolate or milk or a dairy or something like that. Or light, huh? you're saying? Yes. Uh, I'm actually saying that uh, love is a frequency and a vibration. And love is a word in knowledge form, but it comes, it comes to us as light form we are all light beings and we are emanating light so the word or the vibration is the is in knowledge form and we need to translate it through our consciousness in from in from light into our bodies into a cellular level that will come in and nourish us and that 
translation happens in our consciousness. If our consciousness expands to know that love can energize us, if, we, if it extends to that, then love can energize us. But it really matters on what we believe. But if we believe that we need meat to energize us, mm -hmm. and the whole world believes that meat will energize us, then meat will energize us. So now the consciousness of humanity is changing, that they think vegetables and fruits can energize us, and sure, vegetables and fruits will energize us. But when will man realize, hey, you know, maybe the sun can energize me. Maybe this conversation when I'm talking, there's so much energy, this is energizing me. What happens when I go for my family dinner, the conversation with my grandmother and my mother, like those days, that conversation and being with those people, People, there's so much energy there you don't need to eat a lot mm. right if they understand that people can energize us and then finally that love can energize us maybe we'll ascend and each eat, eat much less so I'm not saying don't eat I'm saying there are different types of food there's a food out there that we do not know of and now all I'm doing is my message is hey there's a food out there our consciousness needs to ascend to tap into those energies mm. let's include that food Yes, yeah, let's include that food on the menu as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. That you're absolutely right. That's it. <laughs> so there is. So it's not just saying oh, uh, no meat or no. You, you, because you don't eat much, do you? I mean, how much do you eat? Just so that uh, we know. Uh, for last month, I. For real, I mean, yeah. just a real figure. For, for real figure, my wife eats about three meals a week. Uh, last month I ate twice and when I when I eat it's not like I eat like uh, a thousand calories I eat for pleasure or for or for taste and I really wanted to eat last month I wanted to eat seafood I've not eaten seafood for a long time and so I had crabs and prawns last month but just for taste not for energy energy comes from vibration and consciousness and love but for pleasure of course food absolutely I enjoy chocolate once in a while. And water, because some, some people claim that they don't even drink water. Is that possible? That, that, yes, of course that's possible. I would go long days without drinking water. Uh, now, for, today, for instance, today I've not drunk water for nearly now close to maybe 20 hours easily. But I'm completely o okay. But see, when you're not eating much, and see, the water thing is not so mystical, not drinking water. It's just that when you are not toxified... Okay, water comes into your body like, the, like uh, um, uh, when there's a fire, the fire department sends the, the lorries full of water because there's a fire. Why? Because of the fire. So the same way if I'm eating meats every day and eating all kinds of foods and sweets and sugars every day, then the fire brigade needs to come in, which is the water. So if I'm toxic, I need a lot of water. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not toxified, then I can go long days without so much water. So that's the water thing. It's not mystical. It's just common sense. Does, can we say that the body adapt? I mean, all this, of course, we're speaking this, but I mean, you, I mean, you teach people that in your 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 courses, and yeah. this is not something to just try like that. Of no, the, there's ma ma many things to you know. We're just not saying go off food. Period. Huh? Like Let's do a little warning. Yes. yes, it is very important that no one tries this. Why teachers are given to the world is so that they could teach. Okay, so uh, I, I teach this and there will be other people who can teach this as well. And I teach how you can do this. So don't try this on your own. And especially don't go without water because your body absolutely needs water. It's just that when your body is not toxified, it doesn't need so much water. So you really need to go through a lot of detoxing before you can go without water. Or otherwise the toxins will remain in you if there's no water and you can get very sick. So that should not be done. Uh, is, is there some process into detoxifying? I guess a lot of the detoxing just not only happens in the body, but in the mind. Huh? Absolutely Ooh. Right. Uh, you're absolutely right. So on our program, I tell people this. I say once, once there's a very high frequency in the room, what happens is there's harmonic resonance. Now the highest frequency is agape love. So when love is in the room, what happens is your soul, the frequency of love, every man ha is, the whole world is created out of love. You know, love is the creative force. Without consciousness of love, there is no creation. You put two beautiful people in a room, what are you going to have uh, after a little while? You'll have babies when they're, uh, you know, because love creates. It's natural to create in love. Now, understanding that if there is no love, okay, and you are depriving yourself of food, you start starving. And that's what we call starvation. So fear and no food equals starvation. But if 
a person is in love, then he doesn't have to eat much or take so much of nourishment from a lower frequency vibration. So we do say that we need to detoxify our soul. So on the program, we detox the body, but a lot of people, because of the frequency of love, they start, uh, they start detoxing their soul. So unforgiveness goes away. Forgiveness comes in. Uh, people they've been angry and bitter with, on the program itself, they start detoxing and the love in them starts coming out. That's the main thing in the program. So a lot of people in the program says, oh, I just feel I'm just so loved and I feel I love people. I said, good. Now you don't have to reach out for the chocolate. Hmm. Now you don't have to reach out for uh, the food because you're feeling the love. Without feeling the love, this will be starvation. Hmm. Love is the force that keeps it to be living off the energies around you. I remember this interview I did with Dr. Bruce Lipton on the honeymoon effect. And you appreciate yes. uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Yes. Tell us about his work that, that is related to yours. Yes. I, I love uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton because uh, he's a scientist and he practically shows how it's done. So we do a reprogramming as well, a reprogramming. But we reprogram, I reprogram in what is known as the communion because I come from a mystical Christian background. But you can... Uh, reprogram on whatever you want or whatever love experience you had so I'll take the communion and I will reprogram thinking of how much I'm loved by God then the subconscious mind opens up the subconscious mind can only open up I just wait till that passes mm -hmm. the subconscious mind can only open up to two things either fear or love the subconscious mind programs and records but how do we get access to the subconscious mind because the left brain stops you know, the subconscious mind opening up but if we can have access to the subconscious mind we can reprogram it so what we do is we do meditations of love so we'll, I'll sit with the communion and I will teach people to feel the vibration of love the love of God when they feel how much God loves them or if it was a person who doesn't know God or doesn't believe in God he can feel the love of how his wife or his uh, parents or his grandparents love them when you do that your subconscious mind opens up now affirmations can be said affirmations without the subconscious mind opening up for the reprogramming is it, it, it doesn't work right so once you felt love your subconscious mind has been opened up and we can do the right affirmations and the reprogramming I am life I am joy I am fulfilled we can do that and the subconscious mind will take it because there's love in the room so love is very important in the reprogramming. Yeah. How do we know that love exists? Well, you know, um, uh, love uh, can be seen. It's a very visible thing. You know, p uh, love can be felt. It's very visible. You know, uh, uh, I, I think we all know it. And, we've, and we, when we see it, you know, our faces light up and we know what it feels like. And uh, love brings such a hope. And when you're hopeful again, you know that you've, been, you've experienced love. So, uh, of course, uh, I, I, think, um, I, I think every everything, even the dogs and the insects and everything feel love. And um, uh, we've had experiences where animals don't even bite because uh, if you're always in a consciousness of reconciliation and forgiveness, uh, even, even the animals don't bite or the, the, the dogs won't bite you, the snakes won't bite you. We've had many experiences like that in our life. Or, or the Coca-Cola or the poison won't hurt? Yes, you're absolutely right. You know, um, uh, Jesus said that if you drink poison, it will not kill you. You know, and uh, that to do, not to do at home. Yeah. Please do not do it at home. Uh, but he, he, they, they said it, the sages said it, because they understood that it... I always say this, um, uh, Lilu, the world is becoming more toxified. You can't help that, right? It's becoming more toxified. The big industries are doing what they're doing, okay? Uh, the world is becoming more toxified. The world is becoming more offensive. So I always say this, I cannot depend on what is outside of me to, to help me. I cannot de depend on what is outside of me to raise my energy level or my frequency of vibration. I need to go deep inside of me. So my l slogan is this. I say, I am a, a, a detoxing machine in a toxic world. I say, I'm a forgiving machine in an offensive world. Okay? So we are made for forgiveness. We do it best. We can forgive. It's so easy. It's not hard. It's so easy to detox. It's not hard. When you breathe in, you breathe out because your body is made to detox. So you breathe out. When you are up all day, you sleep at night. It's the de detoxing. So that's why I'm trying to say that offenses come. People offend you. People get angry with you. But what, with what I'm talking, people get angry. But you know what? But, but we, that's what we must expect. We must say, yes, that's cool, but that's all right. But we, we change our mind. We are a forgiving machine. Mm. And that's what we can do from inside. 
We have no control for what is coming outside, but we sure can control what we do inside. So when the world becomes more toxic, and when the air becomes more toxic, are we going to try and stop? Um, are we going to try and stop the industries from um, from producing? We might not be able to have control, but we can trust in ourselves. And say, so, you know what? No matter how toxic the world gets, no matter how toxic the Coca-Cola gets, no matter how toxic the vegetables get in the future, even if I eat it, my conscience is not in bondage to this thing. I am not addicted to this thing. So you know what? It's not going to hurt me. So I'm a detoxing machine in a toxic world. It's a better place to stay than try to say, let's stop the toxins. Mm -hmm. So you're not in the in the world of of just happy uh, bunnies and just fluffy clouds no. and all is well. You're you're really clearly anchored in reality, just taking a step and taking a stand for ourselves. Yeah. We can all do this, or it's just for some special people in Sri Lanka. Yeah. No, I, I think we all can do this. I think our greatest potential is yet to come. And if we just find out that we are absolutely loved. And we know that you know, the divine loves us, whoever you want to call him, you know, that he loves us. Or her, or it. Or her, or it, or uh, you can call it your higher self, whatever it is. But once you know that you are l absolutely loved, find a connection, find a reference point. For me, my reference point was the cross. So I found God loves me. You can find your own reference point. Once you find a reference point of love, hold on to that. It will unlimit you. Love unlimits you. Where is the difference, without going into the, the, the religious topic, yeah. but uh, where do you think we're evolving regarding those, those rituals, those prayers, those obligations, those restrictions, those you can do this but not that, you have to do this a number of times but not that, where are we at now? Yeah. I think, you know, I think that this is a really bad year for uh, religion uh, or, or institutionalism because institutionalism is falling in every area. I believe that the identities of, the, uh, of every religion is important and I honor those, but I think grace is being realized in, in every stream and in every tradition and, and that's what needs to happen. I think all the masters and all the teachers are realizing that there is a grace that we don't need to follow the rules and regulations the more the law is put on us the more we need to perform and the more we become someone else so when you put laws performance is mandatory but when there's grace we can be ourselves and just keep receiving God is about giving we are about receiving the God in us is always creating the man in us is enjoying the creation that's the way it works we are both one the two have become one the creator God in us is creating and the, and the man in us the five sense man is enjoying the awesomeness of the Creator. Mm -hmm. You know, the two have to work together, but it's by grace and it's not by the law, mm -hmm. by religion. Are you? Are you uh, how, what do you believe we create our reality, or there's a destiny, and we're just uh, surfing that free will? I mean, all of that. Where? What is your yes. vision here? I think we're destined to create our reality. You know. <laughs> That's the way it works. You know, we are creative beings and the world is manifesting more that we are all creators. But here's the thing. We are not individual creators. We are creators as a whole. The more agreement we have together, we will create a new world. And, you know, before that, we, cre we, we, we decided that uh, meat is good for us. And at that moment of time, meat was good. Okay, now we have decided and we've agreed that vegetables are good for us and meat are bad. Now meat is bad. And so we created vegetables are good. The same way we can create, you know, vibrations are good. We can live off vibrations, you know. And then the world will agree upon that one day and it will be our new reality. It's just a matter of agreement together. And that's what makes reality agreement from conscious people, not the unconscious masses. The unconscious masses are not agreeing on anything, but they're still creating. There, are f there, is, there is so much toil, labor, and, uh, and destruction because of unconsciousness. But when conscious people come together and agree, we can change the unconscious masses reality as well. Mm -hmm. That is possible through conscious people's agreement. Yeah. Some people will find maybe this conversation uh, futile or knowing that some people are starving around the, the world. What is your, your, your view on that? I think we all must play our part. You know, and uh, uh, yes, we see the suffering uh, of people, and that's why we do what we do. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm uh, like you say, I have many businesses, I work for the government, and but I still, this is my favorite job, because uh, uh, we really need to be a part of the consciousness. We really need to awaken people unto righteousness and uh, unto their sainthood, and tell them, hey, you know what, you can play your part just by agreeing with me right now. Lilo, you and I are agreeing. This right now is, uh, is affecting the unconscious masses and affecting the world right now you and I are creating 
and if if what happens if the whole world gets together agrees on certain things that are right and correct mm -hmm. that will be our reality mm -hmm. and yet as human beings like I, w I won't be able to agree on everything like it's you know like there's the resisting part and yes. the uh, my own faith part or yes. what what have you but uh, there is love we can all agree on love you know what I'm saying Absolutely, that's exactly right, Lilo. We can agree on love, that love can change the world. Yes. And that is an underlying basic principle. I believe every religion, at the end of every religion, they're pointing towards one place. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that agreement, that love, and sacrificial love, unconditional agape love, not just the eros philos, mm -hmm. but the sacrificial laid down love can change the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kirby pleasure it's been a real honor thank you it was awesome meeting you awesome my delicious co-creators i hope you have enjoyed this interview if you have please share it let's 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 have this video go around and around the planet many many times this is the time to do that thanks to the internet we have the possibilities this conversation changed the world thank you much much love